Hello and welcome to this clip looking at how to do a good quality graph for A-level chemistry questions, the most common kind being rate of reaction. So the key requirements are listed as follows. You need to use as much of the paper as possible and choose a suitable scale for the data set you're given. You label your axes including units and you plot the points accurately with an X or a circle dot. If you have to do a line of best fit, straight, then you use a ruler, or if your shape suggests that you've got a curve, you use a curve of best fit. Now if you have to do this, you need to do a nice smooth curve through the points, avoiding any anomalous points that you might come across, and don't do straight lines between the points because you'll lose marks for this. If you need to do a tangent, for example, to work out the gradient at a certain point on your um, curve of best fit, you do the tangent using the dy over dx principle, so therefore, to minimise grid reading error, you use the largest triangle possible within your graph axes. So let's get a set of data to see how this might work. So I've popped a question from a worksheet on the top. Um, so we've got uh, a set of data from a reaction between zinc and hydrochloric acid. So let's now assume that our space that we're given would be this amount of space within the, um, the paper. So normally what would happen is you'd have a, a sort of section of grid put onto your exam paper and you'd have to draw your graph there and then to show the examiners that you know how to draw this. So working on this idea, I'm going to try to do a graph here um, trying to stick to those key requirements as well. So I'm going to use that section of the paper, uh, as much of it as I can, uh, before I get started. So, thinking about the, uh, the data set, I've got 10 minutes as my maximum and 118 uh, centimetres cubed as my maximum. So if I take one large square, meaning 10 centimetres cubed, on my y-axis, and uh, one large square being one minute on my x-axis, so my y-axis can be my volume of gas and my x-axis can be time. So you can see what I'm doing now is just putting in my points, sorry, my um, scales on the y-axis. So you might have, have spotted this before I did. I'd forgot that it needs a zero, zero, an origin. So um, I needed to extend my line by one grid space, so I extended it so I could accommodate 120. So now I have a scale that accommodates my, my range of gas volumes, and I have a scale that accommodates my range of times. So just checking against my requirements, I've done number 1, 2 and 3, so now I'm going to uh, go down to 4, 5 and 6. So I'm going to go for using X's. It doesn't matter if you use circle dots, but I personally prefer X's. So now I've plotted all the points, and you decide before I do my um, curve of best fit, obviously it's going to be, um, are there any anomalous points? And I'm thinking maybe that little one at the top there. So when I'm doing my curve of best fit, I might want to ignore that. Maybe that one there. I mean, it's a very, very close run thing here. I mean, you might disagree, um, but I don't think there's any major anomalies here. But you know, thinking about a curve of best fit, you may wish to just consider one or two of those, perhaps. So I'm now going to try and draw a freehand curve. Now it's not easy at the best of times when you're doing it on graph paper. It's even less easy on an iPad, particularly when you're recording yourself on YouTube. So uh, bear with me a second while I have a think about this. So starting down here. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Like that. So I didn't stop. Uh, it's a little bit wobbly in places, uh, looking at it. Am I happy with that, about 70%? So I'm going to try it again. So I've got rid of it now. I'm going to try it one more time. 
No, I'm not, not like that. That's rubbish. I'm leaving this in. I'm not going to edit this out, but I think it's important to share with you the actual process of deciding how to draw the curve of best fit. So let's try it again. Now that's obviously rubbish again. So let's rub it out and try it one more time. Might change colours, so fourth time lucky. Okay, that's reasonable. I'm going to stick with that. So now I'm going to move down to the tangent part. So the question wants me to find the rate of reaction after five minutes and after nine minutes. So what I'm going to do is uh, find the point at which five minutes exists on the line and the point at which nine minutes exists on the line. So at nine minutes, sorry, five minutes, you have a point where the curve still has some slope in it. And at nine minutes, you can see the curve is flattening off. So at nine minutes, the curve is leveled off so the reaction rate can be reduced to zero centimeters cubed per second at this point. This is the point at which there's no more gas being made, because you can see from the data at nine and 10 minutes that you have 118 centimeters cubed in both of those times. So looking at the point at five minutes, we're now going to draw a tangent um, using the maximum possible space within the grid section that I've chosen for my graph. So you can see quite clearly that it levels off at uh, nine minutes. So we're going to ignore nine minutes and just assume that that's going to be zero um, centimeter cubed per second. So the tangent should cut the y-axis and take up as much of the square grid um, section that you've used as possible, which then allows us to put in uh, dy and dx. So I'm going to make a judgment call here on the grid space, as in the individual small squares. If you had space on your, um, on your graph paper, uh, you'd be able to see uh, a lot more closely by looking at it. So I'm going to go for 7.25 minutes as dx and dy being 69 centimeters cubed. So working out the rate of reaction, I arrived at about 9.5 centimeters cubed per second to the minus one. Now, if you look at the lines I'm using, they're quite thick to emphasize where you draw them to get the tangent, and also then to work out dy over dx. Obviously, on actual paper, you'd be using a pencil, so the lines would be thinner. So if you were to maybe take this data and try it yourself on a piece of graph paper, it might end up slightly different to the value I've got. Now, usually what would happen is you'd have a range of sensible values um, on the mark scheme. You wouldn't have to actually land on a specific number. Um, so provided there's a bit of common sense being used in your graph drawing, you should be able to fall within that range. And the other thing to remember is that I've also drawn this on an iPad. Um, so it's obviously going, this curve of best fit's not going to be as good as I would have liked. You can remember I tried it several times before I was happy with it. So although it says two marks for the rate of reaction question at the top, you'd actually get five marks if you were asked to draw the um, the graph from scratch and then use that to work out the rate of reaction. Uh, so there's several things you'd have to bear in mind from the key requirements. Um, so to each of the, every two of those for example might be one mark. So let's now look at uh, some other examples where you might have to draw a tangent for example to find the initial rate. So in order to find the initial rate of reaction as opposed to the rate um, five seconds in or nine seconds in, for example, you need to draw a tangent at the start of the reaction and in the same way that we've just looked at, draw the largest possible triangle you can. And then you can work out dy over dx. So let's look at an example of this. So we've got an example here where they've done the tangent for you at t equals zero and they've done the tangent at 3,000 seconds. So what we need to do is dy over dx at each point. 
So using the x-axis and the y-axis of uh, the tangents bisects both of them, so we can use the x and y-axis measurements themselves, the scales, to work out dy over dx, which is 0 0.50 divided by 3,300, which gives you 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per decimeter to minus 3 seconds to the minus 1. So for the rate at 3,000 seconds, to do dy over dx this time, I'm going for the largest triangle possible within the grid space. So you can see where the, the lines, the black lines for my triangle are. So my change in concentration this time is 0.38 minus 0.14 moles per decimeter cubed, which gives me 0.24 moles per decimeter cubed. And my change in time is 3950 seconds, which gives me 6.0 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per decimeter to the minus 3 seconds to the minus 1. So this would support the fact that the slope is getting shallower as the reaction slows down. Okay, so this takes us to the end of this uh, clip. Hopefully it's been a useful uh, look at how we'd use tangents and graphing skills to work out rates of reaction in chemistry. So for now, thanks for listening, and until next time, see you soon.